Vittorio Little Vicamuso is the boss of the Lucchese crime family. He was described as the deadly Don by United States Attorney Charles Rose. Amuso's reign is considered one of the bloodiest periods in American Mafia history during the late 80s and early 90s, alongside his former underboss and close protege Anthony Casso, who turned informer against him in 1994. Since the death of Colombo crime family boss Carmine Persico in March 2019, Amuso is currently the longest serving crime family boss of the five families in American Mafia, dating back to 1987. Umuso has been serving a life sentence since 1992 and is currently located at the Federal Correctional Institution Cumberland in Maryland on murder and racketeering charges. Vittorio Umuso was born November 4, 1934 and grew up in Canarsie, Brooklyn. In the late 40s, he was introduced to Anthony Tony Dux Corallo, a prominent capo in the Gagliano crime family, a forerunner to the Lucchese crime family. Umuso acted as a bodyguard and chauffeur for Carmine Tremonti. Vic Amuso was married to Barbara, and the couple had one daughter, Victoria. They live in Howard Beach, Queens. He later became an enforcer for Profaci crime family mobster Crazy Joe Gallo in Brooklyn. In the late 60s, the Gallo brothers declared war against longtime crime boss Joe Profaci and the old Profaci faction of the family because Profaci cut into Gallo's profits. Amuso would allegedly kill several members of the Profaci faction, but was sent to prison sometime in the early 60s along with Joey Gallo and a dozen others for extortion charges. After Joe Gallo's release from prison in early 1971, he continued his war against the family on June 28, 1971, when boss Joseph Colombo was shot. Months later, on April 7, 1972, Joe Gallo was shot to death in Little Italy, Manhattan, while he was celebrating his 43rd birthday. Many Colombo crime family members, especially those from the old Gallo crew, defected to other crime families. Umuzo went to the Lucchese family sometime during that year as an associate in the 19th Hole crew, whose capo was Christopher Funari. Umuzo became one of Funari's top protégés along with Anthony Gaspipe Casso. On December 21, 1972, Umuso was arrested by police outside the house on Morgan Avenue a front for the Bronx Connection, a kickback scheme, selling prison paroles for as high as $20,000 to prison inmates, presumably to meet the building owner, Richard Curro, and city corrections officer, the Lucchese family associate, who acted as liaison between inmates and the Lucchese's, Amuso was in possession of a switchblade and a file folder of parole documents at the time of his arrest. In 1977, Amuso became a made man in the Lucchese family. On May 30, 1977, Musso was arrested with Anthony Gaspipe Casso for their involvement in the drug trafficking ring smuggling heroin from Bangkok, Thailand. At the time of the Brooklyn mobster's arrest, he had been found with three pounds of heroin in his possession. Reportedly, the heroin operation was headed by Musso, his cooperator Casso, and two other associates of the Lucchese crime family. They were all sent to prison. Funari was promoted to consigliere in 1980, and Amuso succeeded him as capo. Funari wanted Casso to succeed him, but Casso preferred to become Funari's aide-de-camp. A consigliere is allowed to have one soldier work for him directly. On April 13, 1986, the underboss of the Gambino crime family, Frank DeChico, was killed when the bomb placed under his car went off. The bomb had been planted by Herbert Pate, while Muzo, Casso, and Vic's brother Robert watched from a parked car. The target was allegedly Gambino boss John Gotti, who earlier, with Chico, had organized the murder of former boss Paul Castellano without the permission of the commission. Reportedly, Amuso and Casso, along with Genevieve's crime family boss Vinny the Chin Giganti, had planned Gotti's execution but killed Chico by mistake. Although Casso later testified that both he and Amuso had conspired with Giganti, this was never raised at the trial because Casso was dropped from the witness protection program years later. On February 15, 1985, Corallo, Frenari, and underboss Sal Santoro were indicted in the Mafia Commission trial, along with the heads of the five families. To replace him, Corallo put his protege, Anthony Buddy Luongo, as acting boss sometime in early 1986. However, around December of that same year, Luongo disappeared. It was rumored that Umuso, then Luongo's driver and bodyguard, killed him to remove his last major opponent with the assistance of Casso. By late 1986, Corallo realized that he, Santoro, and Funari were headed to convictions that would send them to prison for life. To avoid internal war and keep up the family's tradition of a peaceful transfer of power, Corallo summoned Amuso and Casso to a meeting at Funari's house and decided that one of them would succeed him as boss. 
Fenari then met with his two protégés and told them to decide which one would take the mantle. They ultimately decided it should be Amuso. He was named acting boss later in 1986 and the new official boss on January 13, 1987 when Corallo and others were sentenced to life imprisonment. From 1978 to 1990, four of the five crime families of New York, including the Lucchese family, rigged bids for 75% of $191 million of the windows contracts awarded to New York City Housing Authority. Insulation companies were required to make union payoffs between $1 and $2 for each window installed. Meanwhile, the bloodletting only increased after Amuso named Casso as his underboss in 1988. Towards the late 80s, Amuso and Casso began arguing with Anthony Asaturo, head of the family's powerful New Jersey faction, the Jersey Crew, about the profit that Asaturo sent to the family administration. Asaturo had only been sending $50,000 a year to New York, but Amuso and Casso wanted half of the Jersey Crew's yearly take. When Asaturo refused, Amuso stripped him of his rank. In the fall of 1988, the entire Jersey crew was summoned to meet with Amuso in Brooklyn. Ten of the crew's members showed up for the meeting. However, fearing that they were being set up to be killed, they all abruptly drove off. In fury, Amuso ordered the entire Jersey crew killed, the now infamous Whack Jersey Order. Soon, the entire New Jersey crew had gone into hiding, decimating the Lucchese interests in New Jersey. Muso and Castle went on to eliminate anyone on even the mere suspicion that they might be defectors or they've been considered potential rivals. Over the next 12 months, most of the New Jersey crew members returned to the family. Amuso told the crew members who came back that Asaturo was an outlaw and needed to be disposed of. Amuso sent Hitman to Florida to search for Asaturo. However, what Amuso didn't realize was that Asaturo was jailed in New Jersey for refusing to testify in front of a state panel. Asaturo would later become an informant. Asaturo's former protege and longtime rival, Michael Mad Dog Tresetta, who was also despised by Amuso, reportedly took over the Lucchese Jersey crew, the nickname of their faction in northern New Jersey, toward his conviction in 1993, before Asaturo eventually agreed to become an informant. In May 30th, 1990, Amuso and Casso were indicted as part of the Windows case. Acting on prior knowledge, Amuso and Casso went into hiding. Amuso named Alphonse Little Al Diarco as acting boss. But the bloodshed of Vic Amuso and Tony Casso wasn't over yet, as Lucchese Capro regime Peter Fat Pete Chioda was charged with violations of the RICO Act in 1991. Suspecting that Chioda had turned informer, Amuso decided to have Chioda killed. On May 8, 1991, three gunmen shot Chioda 12 times, but failed to kill him. A few weeks later, Amuso sent word to Chioda's attorneys that his wife had been marked for death. This violated a long-standing mafia rule that women are not to be harmed. Later, a hit team nearly killed Chiodo's sister. The move backfired spectacularly, as Chiodo became a government informant and agreed to testify against several major heads of the five families, including Amuso, that same year. Chiodo revealed details of the entire Windows case operation, several murder and conspiracy charges, loan sharking and extortion, as well as money laundering and drug trafficking operations around Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and the Bronx. Muso issued several other orders that led many inside and outside the Lucchese family to conclude that he was no longer acting rationally. He and Casso crafted a list of 49 people that they wanted dead, half of whom were Lucchese wise guys. He also ordered Diarco to bring in a bomb expert from the Philadelphia crime family as part of a plan to blow up Gambino boss John Gotti. Muso then turned his wrath on Diarco, whom he held responsible for the failed hit on Chiodo. He effectively demoted Diarco by naming a four-man panel to run the family in his absence. On July 29, 1991, FBI agents captured Amuso at a suburban mall outside Scranton, Pennsylvania. There were strong indications that the FBI had been tipped off by someone with knowledge of the clandestine telephone system Amuso used to pass on orders. Shortly afterwards, Diarco was set up to be killed at a meeting of top Lucchese leaders at a Manhattan hotel. Diarco spotted a man carrying a gun under his shirt. The man later went to the bathroom, and when he came out, the gun was gone. Realizing that the next guy to come out of the bathroom would likely come out shooting, Diarco fled for his life and turned state's evidence. His testimony, and that of Chiodo and many others, proved to be devastating to Amuso's case. In a separate racketeering trial, Amuso was convicted of all 54 charges on June 15, 1991, including nine murders. On October 9, 1992, Amuso was sentenced to life imprisonment. 
Casso managed to remain free for two more years until he himself was apprehended in 1993. By then, Musso had been seething over the circumstances of his arrest for some time and had come to a belief that Casso had tipped off the FBI in hopes of seizing the boss's mantle for himself. In late 1993, Amuso removed Casso as underboss and decreed that all Lucchese mafiosi should consider him a pariah, in effect, banishing his comrade of some three decades from the family. Casso responded by turning informer himself. After the incarcerations of both Amuso and Casso, the U.S. government learned that they had each allegedly ordered more than 12 slayings while they were fugitives and while on trial, using corrupt NYPD cops Louis Eppolito and Stephen Caracapa as their personal hitmen. After Amuso's indictment in 1991, with the testimony provided by former acting boss Alphonse Little Al Diarco, Amuso promoted his capo regime Joseph Little Joe Defiti to acting boss. In early 1992, Amuso feared that rivalry was being developed in the Lucchese crime family, as some mobsters thought that Amuso was out of the way that they could take over. The rivals were the old Bronx faction in the family, and Amuso felt that he had to prove that he was still in charge. On April 3, 1992, Neil Migliori, one of the most powerful capos of the family, was celebrating the birthday of a friend's granddaughter in Westbury, New York restaurant on Long Island. During the party, a gunman in a passing car fired shotgun blast through the restaurant window, hitting Migliori in the head and chest. Despite his wounds, Migliori survived. The attempt on his life did not sway Migliori away from the crime family, though as he kept operating throughout the 1990s. As Amuso attempted to kill Migliori from the Bronx faction in 1992, he chose another Bronx faction leader named Stephen Wonderboy Crea as his new and powerful underboss of the Lucchese crime family to keep rivals from the Bronx in line. However, this decision almost triggered a new war within the crime family, as Cray, along with Joseph Little Joe Defiti, decided to turn the family's power center away from Brooklyn, New York, and back to the Bronx faction where it had been for decades. This, however, did not please the imprisoned boss Vic Amuso and his supporters within the Brooklyn faction. Crime family consigliere Frank Big Frank Lasterino sought to organize the murder of Stephen Cray, and U.S. law enforcement also recognized the members of the actual leaders of the family at the time and even picked them up on wires and bugs, saying that they were going to kill Gambino crime family boss John Jr. Gotti, son of John Gotti, and his rival Nicholas N Little Nick Carrazzo to split up the Gambinos. This conspiracy also included Genovese crime family boss Vinny the Chin and on the lamb leader Anthony Gaspipe Casso before he was apprehended, but due to massive indictments at the time, slashing all members of the three families involved in the conspiracy, the plot never succeeded and Amuso continued to run the family from prison as most of the conspirators themselves were sent to prison. During the mid-90s, the majority of the Brooklyn faction leaders, many of whom were known Amuso's rivals, were sent to prison on various charges. To keep some sense of stability within the Lucchese crime family, Amuso promoted his loyal friend and Brooklyn capo, Louis Didone, to the position of consigliere, replacing Frank Lasterino. Amuso also kept Joseph Defiti as the crime family's acting boss. Defiti oversaw important crime family operations such as those in the Garment District, which brought in between $40,000 and $60,000 a month. Amuso kept Stephen Wonderpoy Cray of the Bronx as the underboss, overseeing the construction and union racketeering operations that made the crime family between $300,000 and $500,000 a month. Didone was put in control of the crew and street soldiers that took care of all the debt collection and muscle work, basically the collection of gambling and loan sharking debts, the extortion operations, and allegedly murder for hire. On April 28, 1998, Defiti was indicted on nine counts of racketeering stemming from his supervision of the crime family rackets in New York's Garment District from 1992 to 1997. The prosecution reported that since the mid-1980s, the Lucchese crime family had been grossing between $40,000 and $60,000 per month from the Garment District rackets they controlled. In December 1998, Defiti pleaded guilty to the charges and received five years prison. Angry at his guilty plea, Amuso became uncertain of Defiti's loyalty to the crime family, and in the future, Amuso would regard Defiti as a traitor and thief. After the imprisonment of Joe Defiti in 1998, Amuso handpicked Bronx faction leader Stephen Cray as a new acting boss of the Lucchese crime family. Cray, a loyal Amuso underboss, began sending a larger amount of the crime family's profits to the imprisoned boss which convinced Amuso that Defiti had been skimming profits from the crime family the whole time he was acting boss. 
Omizo decided to put out a contract on Defeaty's life in late 1999. On September 6, 2000, Cray and seven other Lucchese members were arrested and jailed on extortion charges. Cray was eventually convicted in 2001 and sentenced to five years in prison. Cray was released from prison in 2006. Following the imprisonment of Cray in 2001, influential consigliere Louis Didone was promoted to acting boss and began to run the day-to-day -day operations of the crime family. Didone at the time was one of the strongest and most dangerous family members. He would continue to oversee the contract ordered by a muso on a prison former acting boss, Joseph Little Joe Defeaty. Defeaty did not know that a muso had placed a contract on his life, but during Defeaty's imprisonment, he was demoted from capo to soldier, and this alerted him to the possibility that he had fallen out of favor with boss Vic Amuso, and he could be in serious trouble. Upon Defeaty's release from prison on February 5, 2002, it was reported that former Amuso ally immediately turned to the government for help and became an informant. Federal witnesses Joe Defeaty and Alphonse Little Aldiarco gave the U.S. government information regarding Lucchese-controlled racketeering operations based around New York City, which helped the federal government continue their decimation of the old Amuso faction. Both Diarco and Defeaty also provided information about rackets such as gambling, loan sharking, extortion, and even information about some old murders, which led to the indictments of Mafia cops Louis Epolito and Stephen Caracapa. Epolito and Caracapa were allegedly taking large bribes from former Lucchese underboss Anthony Gaspipe Casso since the 80s. The two highly decorated NYPD officers were apparently used by Casso and the Lucchese crime family to gain valuable information about ongoing police investigations and cases concerning the Mafia. The two bad cops were also used to lure rivals and possible government witnesses to their deaths, and in some cases, they apparently executed the victims themselves. Didone received a life sentence in 2003 on racketeering and murder charges, while more than a dozen other prominent Lucchese crime family members were sent to prison during that same year on various charges. In 2006, former acting boss Stephen Wonderboy Cray was sentenced from prison, and the ruling panel continued to run day-to-day -day activities of the crime family. In late 2009, ruling panel members Madonna and DiNapoli were indicted on labor racketeering, illegal gambling, and extortion charges. In 2009, Stephen Cray took over as acting boss of the crime family. As of July 2014, Amuso remains the official boss of the Lucchese crime family. Amuso is serving his life sentence at Federal Correctional Institution Cumberland, a federal correctional facility in Maryland, on murder and racketeering charges. According to another mafia historian, Selwyn Robb, Amuso's bloodthirsty tactics resulted in the loss of more than half the family's made members, either as a result of being killed, imprisoned, or turning informant. In May 2019, government witness and former Lucchese soldier John Panisi testified in a trial against Eugene Castell and revealed that current leadership of the crime family. Panisi testified that in 2017, imprisoned boss Vic Amuso sent a letter to underboss Stephen Cray, which stated that Brooklyn-based mobster Michael Big Mike DeSantis would take over as acting boss replacing Bronx-based Matthew Madonna. The testimony from Panisi stated that if Bronx faction refused to step aside, imprisoned boss Amuso had approved a hit list that included a captain and several members of the Bronx faction. During Panisi's testimony, he revealed that the Lucchese crime family operates with a total of seven crews, two in the Bronx, two in Long Island, one in Manhattan, one in New Jersey, and Casalucci's Brooklyn crew, formerly Amuso Casso's old crew, which is now based in Tottenville section of Staten Island. Law enforcement agents have stated that Brooklyn-based mobster Patty DeLaRusso is a new acting underboss and that the Bronx-based mobster Andrew DeSimone is a new consigliere. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of our Mafia TV series, please like and subscribe. Until next time, forget about it.